Videos recorded at Global HRU in New York City are sponsored by Recruitify, a unique new category of recruiting that connects top recruiters with companies looking to hire exceptional talent. If you've been around the last couple of days, you've learned I have opinions about everything, and metrics are one of the big ones. Um, spent 17 years um, leading talent acquisition teams in a variety of um, Fortune 500 companies from SAIC to Boeing, um, started my career recruiting at Intel, actually worked in the home building industry during the height of the home building industry. Um, and now I have my own consulting firm where I help um, companies build their recruitment strategy and look at what matters the most. Um, and I think metrics are one of the really important things. So what I have one that I have a big opinion about, but I want to ask the audience first, um, how many of you that are practitioners or past practitioners have um, tracked time to fill? By whatever method, you, whatever time it started and stopped, and of you with your hands up, how many of you use that to measure your recruiter's success, productivity, you know, but you report it to senior leadership who are obsessed with such a, a metric that this matters. Okay. Yes, and um, how many of you like this metric? Good, okay, we're all in great agreement because it is absolutely the worst possible metric and you have got to convince your executive leadership that they should just ignore this whole thing. And here's why, a couple of reasons. First. <laughs> yes, I can. And oddly, it a a I couldn't convince a client head of HR of it. He said, go talk to my, head of my senior VP of the division, and I convinced him. So um, he was like, you're right, this makes so much sense right now. So what time to fill does, it tracks when, whenever the position was open to the position time it was filled or approved to the person showed up, whatever it is, it's some tracking of time. Um, and what does that really tell you and how does it really impact the business? Because here's what's happened. If I'm a recruiter and I have my somewhere between 20 and 60 recs, depending on who I work for, and I look at my dashboard and time to fill is being tracked, I look and say, well, what job's been open the longest? I better get my butt moving. It, correct, I hear a little laughter. We know that that's the case because I don't want my time to fill to go up. There is no conversation at all about the impact that that individual position has on the overall business as a whole. We instituted, go, I get stay date needed. So every position when it was open had a date needed associated with it. Now there's several ways to look at this. The first one is if um, Lance works for me and he quits tomorrow and he's a revenue generating employee, the date needed is the day after he leaves because I start lo losing revenue that day. Nice and straight and straightforward. If I am launching a new product August 1st and I need new marketing team to work on that starting on June 1st, then June 1st is my date needed. Don't wait until May 1st to tell me you need the damn position. Tell me now on February the 6th and I can get working on it. Who cares if the time to fill is 95 days or 100 days or whatever it is, was the person there on the day that they were needed? And what this helps you do is prioritize your work. So even if position's been open for 100 days, but date needed is still 30 days out, you can focus on the work that is far more important. And then if you do work in an industry like I did at SAIC, where 90% of my employees were generating revenue directly by being billable to a customer, I can calculate the impact recruitment has on the top line on revenue because I can show we had people in place in order to generate revenue and I can also have the right conversations in that two week example, if somebody, we get somebody in four weeks, which might be our average, maybe we fill things in 30 days, yay us, it was 30 days, we lost two weeks of revenue. So we can take a look at the lost revenue and then you start to prioritize your work in a very different way. You start to be able to have much stronger conversations with your executive leadership about the impact the recruiting has, and then nobody is running around saying, why isn't this position filled? Um, it's been 45 days. Well, it doesn't matter. It does matter if it was needed on day two and we're losing revenue, but you start to prioritize and have those conversations, and your hiring managers start to understand um, what really goes into making those decisions. And they stop saying, you know, we took out of Taleo the ability for a recruiter to say my job is hot, medium, or cold, because everybody's job is hot, no matter what it is, it's my, the job I need to fill. That was just ridiculous. And so we moved into this direction and you know, recruiters' behavior changed drastically. They started totally thinking about what was the position that had the greatest impact on the business. And that gave them much more credibility 
when they're talking to their customer as well. Here's what it looks like in the bigger picture. So I'm just gonna stop there and see what questions you have on my fight against time to fill. There's lots of reasons, other reasons to fight against it and see if Lance has anything to add. About a year or so ago, Microsoft had gone in and looked at their mean time to fill and they found that their average, and I think this was in one particular unit, was 18 weeks as their mean time to fill. And they, of course, immediately reacted and said, oh, this is horrible, let's re-engineer. So they re-engineered their hiring process and got it down to 15 weeks, which is a nice improvement. Well, they also track manager satisfaction with hire 90 days post-hire. Guess what metric just dropped like a rock? So all of a sudden they realize, wait a minute, this doesn't work. Let's try something. Let's unengineer. So they unengineered the process improvements, got the mean time to fill back to 18 weeks, and guess what? The line manager satisfaction ratings went right back up. So Microsoft was able to come back in and say, right or wrong, 18 weeks seems to be the right number for us and for what we're doing. So they have kept, they unengineered their changes, put it right back. Yeah, so my question was, uh, can you tell us the aha moment that you had that made you realize this time to fill is total BS? That, that's actually a, a very good question. What was my aha moment um, was really, it was probably, so I was at SAIC for seven years. So I started there in 2006. So it was probably six, seven months into that where, you know, I was still trying to dig up, you know, what are some of our problems? What do we need to figure out? You get kind of that first year grace period where you're the expert until you work there long enough and you're an idiot like everybody else um and <laughs> yes, yes exactly <laughs> about a year there but i was sitting with one of our top recruiters who people really valued as understood the business and said you know i'm just going to spend the day with you shadow you just want to see and he opened up the desktop and he, he and i said okay what do you do first and he said i sort by my days to fill and the ones that are have been open the longest i start to work on and the one that was at the top of his list was an administrative assistant to an administrative assistant who worked in our graphics department and I, which had nothing to do with anything and I'm like you are seriously telling me you're gonna go spend time on this right now versus this we were in the government space so fully cleared systems engineer with a full lifestyle polygraph and he said yeah because my days to fill metric is what a determines part of my performance rating and part of my bonus so you better believe I'm gonna go find an admin assistant today and I was like holy crap what are you doing no the business shouldn't be looking he's at it. it well, he's doing what, the, what he had been told to do. And so, so I then started going around to other recruiters and saying, is this what you were doing? Is this is what you were doing? Now, as a recruiter myself, um, you, I did the same thing back in time, but it, I was always in my own little world. And just then started to have the conversations. And as is common at large companies, you know, I wasn't going to convince everybody of this overnight. I got one small division to tell me, yes, Carol, we'll let you play with this. And we'll we added a field into Taleo, which took six weeks to get you know, approval from everybody involved to create a field, which I could have done myself. Um, and then we started tracking it. And so when I was able to show, look at the impact on the business, then it started to grow. I mean, it took me, and I'm not joking, two and a half years at a 40,000 person company to get the whole company there. Um, but it, that was the aha moment where he was literally going to go recruit an assistant to an admin. So completely entry level versus spend any time sourcing for a very hard to fill position. And that was when I thought, oh, we're doing this wrong.